Involving Family Carers. This film is about the ways that family carers can and should be involved when a relative with learning disabilities is unable to make a decision for themselves. The Mental Capacity Act says that health and social care professionals must consult with relevant people to determine the best interests of someone who lacks the capacity to make a decision for themselves. Why should family carers be involved? I suppose the first bit is it's actually the law. <laughs> the Mental Capacity Act states very clearly it's not an optional extra. You can consult families if you wish. It states very clearly under best interest that's a responsibility of any decision maker. So, I mean, I think there is a sort of basis, really. I mean, I would just encourage anybody in terms of just the amount of knowledge that a family member has about their their relative and what they can contribute to that. In fact, what the Mental Capacity Act is saying, I think the person-centred plan works really well with that because it's allowing people to come together and make decisions and involving that person in that decision. And involving families as well, which is another thing families were just kind of ignored. And now we're encouraging families to come along and say, because of the fact is the knowledge we have about that person. That's what's lost, really. If you don't include families in decisions making and you not allow families to speak up on behalf, it's, it's what you lose. You lose all that knowledge the person has about that person and really making life very difficult for the cared for person. Because you, you, know, you have to start the process about what is that person like, what do they know, what's going on, they're behaving that way. The fa families would be able to say to you, this is what's going on, that person is unhappy. And that's what they're saying to you. Well, certainly you should be involved and your opinion should matter because I think that's the real fear is that families who, after all, have a lifetime of experience as opposed to any professional who dips in and out, that that experience is acknowledged. There might be some kind of conflict. We were very lucky, but we've also experienced the kind of consultant who's so dismissive of both the person with the learning disability, but also the families or the relatives. So you can have that, or you can have a formal meeting where people actually sit around in a room together, and that, if there is any dispute, that is certainly what should happen. But I think for the families, they are, they need, they should expect to be entitled to having an equal say as any other party in that group. So, in principle, it should um, work to everyone's advantage. I think, um, for some families, meetings are not comfortable for them, and a lot of the work needs to take place as part of a process. And we need to recognise the family will need to have this information, to give have their say in this way. But it may not be in a meeting, but there obviously needs to be a relationship of trust mm -hmm. If a family are not going to come to meetings, their wishes and preferences are um, conveyed into that meeting in an honest and transparent way, and the outcomes of that meeting are communicated back to them as well. Mm -hmm. There's great value in spending time in supporting people to understand how that meeting is going to work and to understand that they, their views matter, that they must be consulted with in this situation. My professional experience um, for my own clients when they come to seek my advice is usually because they've not not that they feel that their family member necessarily would have been able had the capacity to make the decision, but they weren't consulted. I think that's mo actually been more common. It's just not addressed at all. When this happens, I don't think you can underestimate how angry and hurt and frustrated the family feel. If they were consulted, then that would eradicate those feelings of frustration and hurt and anger. And family carers shouldn't be scared of, of being part of that. And if they have any concerns, they must, there are caring organisations in all parts of this country now who they should actually phone, mostly there are help and advice lines, or even phone up MENCAP, they have a free advice line, and make sure that they are part of it, that they're not shut out of that decision making. I mean, I think that's the benefit, really, of the Capacity Act. Whatever contradictions and tensions lie within it, is that families are clearly positioned as part of 
where they're involved, because obviously there are some people who don't have family involvement, but where there's anyone with a questionable capacity, those closest to them should be there. If this film has raised issues that you would like to talk about, the Family Carer Support Service will try to help. You can telephone them on 0117 906 1751 or email familycarersupport at hft.org.uk.